Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited today to be bringing God's Word to you. Now, today is the last day of the month of July. And listen to me, God's plan for you is great. It has been great. It is still great. It will never change from being great. Why am I telling you this today? Expect a miracle today. Praise God. This month is not going to end until God blesses you, evidently. You know what I've been talking about all through the month? Jesus wants you to be a witness of his personality, a witness of his glory, a witness of everything he represents. And that's being done by the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. So listen to me. I don't know what is in your heart, but let me tell you today, expect a miracle. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread today? Are you ready? Now, if you've never released your faith in doing this, do so today. Praise God. Join me right now and say, Father, I demand for my daily bread today. And Lord, I receive everything that I ought to have received this month. I'm receiving it today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, as simple as that sounds, if you believe in your heart, then expect a miracle. I've told you this, Jesus said, if you believe that those things which you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. And that's how faith works. Now, I have an announcement to make to you today. Today is the last day of the month, so we are stepping into the month of August from 12 midnight, I mean, West African time now, now, prevent our time. 12 midnight today. Now, wherever you are, by 12 midnight, you're entering into a new month. Praise God. Now, we, we every month, we have a prayer and fasting meeting for the first day of the month. And throughout that day, we're going to be fasting and then we're going to be praying according to the watches. So we are starting tonight. Praise God, by 12 midnight. And then we're going to be praying for one hour, 12 midnight to 1 a.m., and then also 3 a.m. to 4 p.m., 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., 3, 9 a.m. to 9 to 10 a.m., 12 noon to 1 p.m., 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., and 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., which is the last watch. Now listen, why is it important you join tonight's meeting? If you've been following the things I've been teaching you for the past few months, you will understand what Isaiah meant when he said precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. If you've been following everything I have been teaching, if you've been applying your heart to them, then get ready for a season of manifestation in your life. Let me tell you this. It doesn't matter. Now, sometimes when people give prophecy, it, it now, it matters where you want to major on. Some people major on what the devil is doing. So they, they, they tell you all the horrible things that Satan has planned for you. Praise God. I see somebody attempting to kill you in your office. And they may be right. See? I see an accident happening on so so and so day. So pray on that day. And that day when something you say, wow, thank God. Now, they may be right. But you see, some of us have chosen to major, major on the mind of God and to see what God is doing. And we are too concerned about the instructions that God will give. Because, you see, no matter what the devil has planned, just one instruction from the Lord will avert everything. If the devil had planned for you to have an accident on whatever day. Now, all you need is an instruction from the Lord. And the Lord tells you, don't travel. Oh, okay, sir. And that's all. He doesn't need to tell you what was planned. Praise God. He doesn't need to tell you. Why? Why do I? Because, you know, even when you want to walk in the prophetic, you have to think and ask yourself, 
what will be benefit most beneficial see that now we we are concerned about that what will be most beneficial what will profit more is it to create fear and panic or to speak the mind of god that will generate faith and obedience so if i come and say the devil is planning a b c d against your life so you better pray now you may find yourself praying out of fear but you see, God can just come and say, look, leave this place and go to that place. Okay, sir. Now you are acting in faith. You see that now? Remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are people who, because of prophecy, cannot go to their village. There are people who, because of prophecy, are having issues in their homes. Because somebody told you that he saw your wife flying in the night. Oh, I saw your husband with a machet chasing you. I don't know the kind of marriage you are in. You better watch it out. Now, now you begin to respond in fear. You go, you go to that house, and then you're now you're reading meaning to everything. Guess what's happening? It's not the Holy Spirit that spoke to you. Believe me. If it generates fear in your heart, or is generating fear in your heart, it's not the Holy Spirit that is speaking to you. No, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's giving us a spirit. Now, now, let me ask you a simple question. Is there anything, is, just think about it. Is there anything that God cannot deliver you from? Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. There was no prophecy that came forth and said, listen, don't follow those people because you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. You see, if God was afraid of the lion, he would have done everything to frustrate. Don't you think God could have frustrated them? Don't you think they would have gotten to the lion's den and the gate of the den would refuse to open? Don't you think so? Don't you think that even the men that have conspired against Daniel, they could have died the very day they wanted to pass that judgment. They could have all slept and never wake, wake, uh, woken up. Do you understand what I'm saying? But they thought they had prospered when they saw Daniel thrown into the den. They thought their plans have been carried out. They thought they have succeeded in closing the matter of Daniel forever. Well, you know the story. God stepped into that lion's den with Daniel. And every lion's mouth was shut. <laughs> All the while Daniel was there, their mouth was shut. Now that's God for you. Is there anything too hard for me? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know the story. They refused to bow. They told the king, if it is so, God will deliver us from the fire and he will deliver us from your hands. They were too confident of God. Now, they were not watching out to see what, at what time is God going to deliver us. Is it when they're about to throw us into the fire? Is it when they, the Bible said even the men that went to put, no, because the king said they should heat it up seven more times even the men that were they as they went close they they got bonds so the men that took them in but these young men god did not show up before they put them in the fire god did not kill the king i said you mean you want to disrespect my children no god did not quench the fire before they got there the fire was still burning and heating up they were thrown right into the fire Saying someone said God showed up in that, he didn't show up in that fire, he was with them all along. <laughs> Praise God! Before they took them in the fire, he was with them while they were taking them in the fire, he was there, he was the one shielding them. If not, they would have started burning before he shows up, showed up, and then oh, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'm here with you. No, he was with them all through. So, the fact that God is with you doesn't mean trouble will not come, but you see. The fact that you are immune from trouble doesn't mean the trouble will not come. It means the trouble will just not overpower you or affect you negatively when it comes. So the sight of trouble doesn't mean you have been defeated. I'm telling you this truth. Sometimes we expect God to show up before the trouble. We see the trouble coming from afar. Oh God, no, God is going to deliver me for that. God's going to, and then you don't see that deliverance. The trouble comes right at your doorstep. Instead of start, you thinking, 
I thought God was going to. Why did God fail me? Who told you he has failed you? Who told you he has failed you? Jesus was with the disciples in the boat. And the storm was hitting the boat. The disciples felt at some point that they were gunners. That they felt they felt they had to go wake Jesus up. Say, look, Master, don't you care that we perish? I mean, Jesus was right in that book. How come the angels, the, because see, let me tell you the, the truth, the wind is controlled by angels. Yes. How come they didn't block the storm? How come, they, no, no, Jesus is sleeping. Nobody should disturb him. Jesus was busy sleeping in that storm. Praise <laughs> God. Why? Is it that he was oblivious of the storm? No. He knew there was a storm. But he felt, look, I've been, I've been preaching all day. I've been, you know, you know what, how he can be like, look, I just want to rest. But there's a storm. Now imagine, there's a storm. Eh, it doesn't matter. Nothing is going to happen to me. Elijah and his servants, they were in that house. And then the Syrian army came and surrounded the house. The servant saw it. And he said, oh, master, we are surrounded. He didn't say, ah, uh, how did they get close? How did they get here? I thought God was going to prevent them from getting here. No. He said, relax. So the fact that he was surrounded was not the issue. What did he know? He said, relax. Those that be with us are more than those that are with them. And the guy didn't understand. He had to pray. He didn't say, oh God, open my eyes. He said, oh God, open his eyes. Because I can just feel the guy has the guy was troubling him so master you don't he didn't have to look outside by himself to see no from where he was said relax oh i pray god gives you that kind of confidence i pray that god gives you that kind of confidence you don't know what we carry many years ago i've told this story many times we were praying somewhere at night and we were arrested by some vigilante group and then they took us to the the, the school security um the, the school security office and after we explained ourselves that we we're students they still had the 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 gods to tell us that we we're going to sleep behind the counter till morning now we were cooperating with them look we're students we're not cultists because they were accusing us that we're cultists and so we're students we're not cultists we're praying they call us praying ask them what they saw us doing when this when they met us now so they now kept insisting that we have to stay behind the counter till morning. This was already past midnight. So at that stage, when I saw that they were not cooperating. Now, you, know, you see, we try to be civil. But it doesn't mean that we don't understand the power that is at work in us. You see that now? So when they were now insisting, they were kind of pushing us to, at that moment, I said, Lord, because I can't, you know, you know, Imagine sometimes how you think and how you consider this God you are serving matters. If you don't understand his character as a protector, as, a, as one, hi. You know, we, if, if the president sends you an assignment and one police officer somewhere is preventing you from carrying out that assignment, what will be your attitude? Now, now, some of you are because you're so proud. Don't you know who I am? No, you know, sometimes you say, no, sorry. I came here for a special assignment. And I think it will be good for you if you just allow me to carry out my assignment. No, you're not carrying out. Who are you? Who are you? You know, <laughs> you're laughing inside of you like, ah, this guy doesn't know the kind of trouble he's buying for himself. But you try to be civil and explain yourself. But sometimes they say, no, no way. Look, Mr. Man, take caution. Just take caution because you might put yourself in trouble. No, well, I will lock you up. Welcome, my friend, enter this place. Then just one phone call you make. You just make the phone call and sit down. Next thing you hear, everybody, see everybody running out that girl. That, and they, oh, sorry, sir, sorry, sir, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Now, now that's how, now that's when a man, a man sent you. How much more when God sends you, when you're doing something in his name. So when they began to say, look, go, you, you sleep behind the counter and then go, go to the bar. Now, I'm not the type of person that will sleep behind the counter and wake up in the morning and say, thank God we suffered for Jesus. No, not, that's not the kind of suffering I know. I understand these things very well. 
Not because I'm afraid. No. But you see, <laughs> you need to understand the God you serve. How do you want it? So I said, Lord, what do we do? And I heard the Lord instantly. The Lord said to me, go home. Now, now the authority in that place, they are pushing you to go behind the counter. And then your, your father is telling you, go home. He didn't send any angel into that place to say, hey, leave this man to go. Oh, I heard him say, go home. So I turned to the people with me. I said, I just know that I said, let's go. And they look, I said, let's go. And I talk, you know, you know, it, it dawned on me that day exactly what the Bible said about Jesus in Luke chapter 4. When they were ca carrying him to go and throw him off the cliff headlong, you know, the Bible said Jesus walked <laughs> through their midst. That was exactly what happened. And I turned and they followed me and we walked through the same people who were telling us go behind the car. We walked through them and left. No man said a word. No man asked, hey, come here. Whatever happened to them that day, I don't understand. Praise God. But I know, I know that the Spirit of God blinded their eyes. That instant. So why am I sharing this with you? It doesn't matter where you are. Hear me. Hear me. God is never late. He is not thinking, oh, there's a point you might get to that cannot save you anymore. No, sir. So it doesn't matter how deep in trouble you are right now. Don't start thinking, I wish I, I, I had not listened. I wish some of you have taken steps you considered in faith. And now you're wondering, did I do what is right? Did I, did I, maybe I should. Stop it. Stop it. Even right now. You can call on the name of the Lord, praise God, and he will answer you and deliver you from that situation. You know, some of you have given. You've given offerings. You've given to your church. And now you're wondering, hmm, hmm. I was thinking when I give that offering, immediately I'll say, if I when that pastor shared his testimony or when that brother shared his testimony, it was instant. Me, I've given my own man two weeks now. I've not seen anything. Ha! Huh? Did I make a mistake? Hey, in whose name did you do that? Now you have given it already. Praise God. Don't, don't start considering. Maybe I should go and ask the pastor and tell the church that it was a mistake. They should give me my money back. I, my mind, something just came over me that time. I think I should go and ask. No, don't do that. You gave that thing in the name of Jesus. Now, now, so say, Maybe you even gave, and then you now heard some days later that that pastor is a fake pastor. Wow, this man deceived. No! Who's in whose name did you give it? I, I always encourage people to give by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I always instruct people to do that. But you see, understand also that in the kingdom of God, there is no regrets. Except you yourself were selfish. Now, it's a heart problem that you have. But if even though you were deceived by a preacher, but you felt that this preacher is doing God's work, so I, if I give to him, I'm giving to God. Even if as that, if that was how you felt, you didn't make a mistake. No, you didn't make a mistake. Now, don't look at the preacher for your harvest. Look at the God to whom you fell, because it is your faith. The just shall live by his own faith. It is your faith in God that costs you to give. So you have given. Don't look at the preacher for your harvest. Look at God for your harvest. So they come tell you tomorrow that that man of God is fake. We discovered he's a very fake man of God. Ah, well, Lord, I have given that seed. And I trust you for my harvest. Hey, the, we saw that man, all the money you people gave in church. We saw him in a beer parlor. He was spending, buying alcohol, drinking, and laughing. I said he deceived all those church foolish people. Father, I have given in your name. And in your name, I receive my harvest. Praise God. It's not about the person. It's about what you were looking at, what you were dealing with when you responded. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Now that's how you should live. What am I telling you today? It doesn't matter how bad or how deep in a situation you are in. It's time to come out by looking up to him and calling on his name and he will bring you out. Praise God. My time is up. Hey, hey. Don't forget to join us tonight. The, the Zoom link is on your screen. Copy it. Join us. We're starting at 12 midnight West African time. So join us and let's have a great time. Praise God. Committing the month of August in his hand and trusting him for the right instructions that we're going to carry out through the month of August. Trust me. Things are going to shift for you. God bless you. I'll see you tonight. Bye.